first time I shot down was just on a mission and came back to the field and was, was shot down. It's all just crash land. And nothing serious to nobody. So you made it back? Yeah, I made it back to the field. The first two planes that were shot down and crash landed back at the one at the field, got back to the base, to Beauvais. Second one was going to the Bremer Pass and had seven brand new officers from the States, never been in combat. And beautiful day down the heading for the Bremer Pass and four planes and all of a sudden the the right hand wingman got knocked down with the first shot. Second shot got the left man. Next shot got the tail man. Next shot got us. All four were shot down with four shots. They never missed one shot. When was it? What was, what was the dates? Oh that? boy, I don't remember. Where were you day. flying out of? Right out of Beauvais Teal, the first mission out of France. And it was leaflets. We were going to drop leaflets, tell the Germans to quit. And it was the first mission out of Beauvais Teal. And we come back toward our own lines and coming in, we made, co-pilot was back there putting on a chute when I got out of the tail and come up front. And I sat in the co-pilot seat with the colonel or major at that time, Major Roos. And I says to him, boy, I hate to be a prisoner now after all the time I've been over here. And he says, how do you think I feel? And I said, well, what are we gonna do? He says, well, where's the co-pilot? I said, back there putting the chute on. He says, well, get out of that chair and go get him. So I got out of the co-pilot seat, went, got the co-pilot, told him to get back in the co-pilot seat. We're gonna crash it, take it back and crash it. So he said, okay. So he took off his chute and headed back up to the cockpit and. Uh, Major Roos told me to go back and tell the rest of the lieutenants to take off their harnesses. So they were all all brand new and they said, what for? Why should we take our harnesses and parachutes off? I said, we're going to crash land and when we crash land, if you fly in the plane and hit each other, you might hook them with that hook and tear his face open or tear his chest open. Oh, never heard of such a thing. I said, well, you got to take them off. And I heard one lieutenant say to the other one, poor, this is pretty rough, sergeant telling an officer what to do. But they took them off, and we made it, headed in for the crash. I was standing behind Major Roos, and I flew right up on top of him when he hit the ground. But I bounced right back off and went right up out of the hatch. Looked down in, and everybody was just sitting there like a bunch of statues. Are you guys going to wait till this thing blows or what? And boy, by that time, the hands started to come in, and I was pulling them out of that hole, 60, 18 inch hole up there on top, <laughs> as fast as I could pull them out. Finally, I didn't see no more hands come, and I looked in, there was nobody left in the plane, so I took off. And the next crash was with. The next crash was midair, uh, takeoff for St. Tron. And we're on our way to St. Tron, and I don't really know what happened. All I know was the next thing I was out in midair, floating in the air, and I was looking down at the ground, trying to figure, boy, what am I doing out here? And I looked up, and there was, I saw a big piece of iron. It looked like a skyhook, and I remember reaching for it but apparently I didn't get it, it got me. It hit me in the head and split the helmet wide open and split my head open, but it knocked me out. So the next thing I woke up, I'm on the ground, and laying in the frozen ground there. And so I said, boy, I was covered with blood. I said, I better get in, better get in a crater or something because I don't know where I'm at. So I crawled into a big crater and I sat there at the 45 waiting to see what was going to happen. And finally, two infantrymen come up. He says, where'd you come from? I said, come out of that airplane. He says, nobody came out of that airplane. We saw it blow. I said, I come out of that airplane. And so I argued a little bit, and then they took me up to headquarters, got a jeep and took me up to headquarters, and the lieutenant interviewed me. And 
He says, well, we, we don't know. We ain't sure if you're a German coming through the lines or what. And then they took me in the hospital there and patched me all up and kept me there for, oh, I guess two days at the most. But I came back to the tent and I says, where's my clothes? He said, well, some officers came in when you went down, picked up all your stuff and took it. And I said, boy, I ain't got nothing to wear. So they gave me a British uniform. And I got pictures of me in that British uniform. I had to wear that for about at least two weeks before I got American uniform again. What were your injuries? Oh, my back, my neck, my head, my feet were busted, both feet. So I could hardly move. Bill, mm -hmm. before we go get to, to Belgium, do you remember what the altitude was when that plane disintegrated? When it disintegrated? I don't know what it was, but the guys that saw it blow said it was probably about 200 feet to 150 to 200 feet. They weren't sure either. Nobody could tell you exactly what it was. But it looked pretty good from up where I was up floating through the air. <laughs> Did anybody else survive that? No, nobody survived. There was nothing but pieces of body all around me when I landed. The next time was on takeoff, the next blow up was on takeoff with Major Bruner. And we took off down the runway and he dragged that right wing for about eh, maybe 100 feet or more. And then we got up 50 foot and he came back down and dragged, we dragged the left wing first, then he dragged the right wing. And then he come back up again and I said, oh, we made it. And right back down into two parks airplanes. And that's, but everything broke apart in the plane and rolled over and I was trapped in the tail again. So I figured, well, I gotta get out of here somehow. So I started pounding at that little window back there. It was there, it was about 18 inch window, 18 by about that wide, maybe 20 inches or so. But I pounded it out with my two f fists. I had two pairs of gloves out. I had no gloves when I got out. But I got out. And I ran across the field, and there was, across the runway. And I had to lay down on the runway. A plane was taken off, and I had to lay down while Z went over me. Then I ran up into the minefield, and I laid down in the minefield. I didn't want to go in too far, because I knew the minefield was there. So I just laid down and waited for the plane to blow. And it was probably five, ten minutes, and finally it blew. And an engine went right by me, over my head, and behind me landed. And as soon as that blew, then there was a tremendous smoke oh, explosion. And I got pictures of that home, too. I'll send it to you. So I got up out of the minefield, walked out the same way, and then walked down to the runway where everybody was looking for the planes to see what happened. Because uh, Major Bruner, was it Major or Colonel, I forget what he was. It was the last, he was going home that morning and he was the only one that was killed. Uh, On the raid to Swineford, uh, they hit us all the way in coming in the coast, fighters were on us constantly. And everybody, I, that day I had stole an extra 50 caliber gun, scavenged it, and I scavenged 250 rounds of ammo, which you weren't supposed to do and carry with you. So I had 250 rounds of ammo plus some extra machine gun, just the guts. So we got heading towards Swineford and we got by the time we got the target, there was only about, uh, probably about eight of us left out of the whole squadron. So we bombed the, bombed the swine for target and turned out, and by the time we turned out, there was two of us. So we were, flew out and into the side and started going, then a couple of stragglers saw us, we were hit pretty good too, but nobody was hitting the plane so the stragglers started joining together and I think we had about six, six of us together who were all hit and we were the only one in the B-17 that had any ammo. 
That was because I swiped 250 rounds of spare ammo. And we had enough ammo. It lasted us all the way out to the coast to get back. So we had a pretty good deal going back. Uh, pilot said, boy, you got the best scavenger on the crew. <laughs> <laughs>